Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August 8th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Joshua Batsui versus Willie Hutchinson. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in boxing, you have some greats. You know the great fighters. They go on a multi-year streak of dominant performances. You know that Canelo, for example, great fighter. Crawford, for example. These guys almost never lose. You understand that for a Canelo to lose, a Dimitri Bevel has to throw down a great performance. Because you understand, Canelo has a standard, and he's rarely below that standard. When you're betting on a Canelo, when you're betting on a Crawford, take the odds on Crawford for his recent fight against Madrimov, right? At the time, an unbeaten champion, who I still maintain is more athletic than Terrence Crawford. Right in a higher weight class than Crawford had fought. Uh, Crawford went off at above a minus 500 in that fight. Right, I believe he goes off at like a minus 700 or something. In other words, folks, you're not going to get wealthy betting on prohibitive favorites, betting on the greats. That's not the way life works. If you're going to make money gambling, you're going to have to take some fighters who, quite frankly, have higher volatility. You know, some days they are shaky. Let's talk about two such individuals here. Nolan Ryan in baseball. What I want people to do is to just look at the number of walks Nolan Ryan had. Right? Nolan Ryan... Folks, there were some days where he just couldn't pitch, where he was walking a lot of people. Ryan didn't stick with the Mets. And the Mets, of course, prioritized pitching back then, right? Tom Seaver, Gary Gentry, Jerry Kuzman, right? Ryan couldn't stick with that rotation. But, of course, there were some days when Nolan Ryan was simply unhittable. Right, seven career no hitters. No one in baseball history has more. Um, no major leaguer has more. Understand, Ryan had 12 one hitters. Ryan had 18 two hitters. Right, there were some days where you understood by the third inning, Nolan Ryan was going to be flirting with the no hitter. Let's talk about U.S. presidents. Let's take this video off the grid. You had a president. He just happens to be one of my favorite presidents ever. Right? But talk about uneven performances. Right? By the way, I spoke with some old-timers about this president. Um, if you do that, you'll find out he's even more controversial than you imagine. Right? This was a guy who had numerous affairs. We're finding out now some of these affairs involved women in their early 20s. We're hearing it from some of the women, right, who worked at the White House, right? Understand, Kennedy had the picture-perfect wife from a PR standpoint, Jackie, right? Women love Jackie, but yet he's out showing incredibly bad judgment by pursuing high-profile actresses like Marilyn Monroe, right? Just understand, Judith Exner, a girlfriend of Kennedy's who actually had been involved with Sam Giancana, right? Someone from the outfit, we'll call it, actually called the White House several times. How does Kennedy ever allow this to happen, right? And, of course, Kennedy himself is 
hanging out with people it is claimed were mob connected, right? We'll, we'll be charitable here in the use of language. Kennedy himself, of course, is the son of a bootlegger, right? But at the same time, Kennedy wanted to reduce the deep state. Think about that today, by the way, right? Kennedy was willing to work with, and this was a paradigm shift at the height of the Cold War. Kennedy, the youngest elected president in American history, was willing to work with democratically elected socialist governments. Folks, that in the early 60s was heresy. And understand too, Kennedy, civil rights movements exploding, he doesn't send his vice president, Linda Johnson, to meet with civil rights leaders, right? Like Dwight D. Eisenhower sent Richard Nixon to meet with Dr. King. No, Kennedy himself meets with the civil rights leaders. He has Dr. King and others visit him at the White House, <laughs> right? Kennedy then works with these leaders and supports the march on Washington. You know, let's just say Kennedy at his best is among the best, right? Bill Clinton, another outlier president, in my opinion, his favorite president was President John F. Kennedy. Now in boxing, I know what I'm gonna say is gonna sound preposterous to many. Right, but I've looked at a lot of fighters. And the underdog in this Joshua Bitsui fight, Willie Hutchinson, is one of the United Kingdom's best fighters. At his best. Right, there's another side to which he to Willie Hutchinson. But understand you watch him and you understand this guy is fluid. You watch him and you understand this is the guy who is a combination puncher, but he's fluid. He's unrushed. Picture that, an unrushed combination puncher. Puts his punches together extremely well. If you can't hurt him, you're in a lot of trouble. Right? Understand, he's like another fighter I've liked, Ishmael Shalak. Right? Who fell apart, couldn't take a punch. But understand, if you couldn't get Shalak off the spot, he was going to dismantle you. Right? If Willie Hutchinson can avoid getting hit hard, he has a chance to do great things. But here's the problem. And it's a big problem. As Ray Robinson put it, boxing is the hurt business. If you can't take a punch, you're going to have problems. Right? If your body, and I believe a lot of us, don't have control over our bodies. If you get hit and your legs go. Your body says to you, player, we're in the wrong profession. I can't take punishment like this. Then you're going to have problems. So let me say this. You remember Chris Eubank's body betraying him when he fought Liam Smith, right? Eubank, up until that point, had never hit the canvas. Eubank got hit and you saw that whatever he was telling the ref, his legs were gone. You saw that nerve-wise, neurologically, he just didn't have control over his body. Right? He was hit. He may have looked lucid, but his body didn't. That's what happened to Willie Hutchinson against Lenny Clark. Right? Hutchinson's dominating the fight. Hutchinson is looking like Willie Hutchinson. Hutchinson at 30,000 feet is a master, right? But then he's over by the ropes. 
His opponent is right in front of him. This is his one loss. One. His opponent is right in front of him. The fight's about three years old. Clark gets off a right hand while Hutchinson is lackadaisical. This is the problem with having talent. Right? You start to take things for granted. Hutchinson is lackadaisical in keeping his hands up. Right, this is a guy with excellent upper body movement, but here he was against the ropes. He gets hit by Clark and his legs go. Right, the referee looks at him. The referee tries to talk to him. Right, this is after he gets up off the canvas and you realize that his body has stopped cooperating. Right, his body is out of control. He has some neurological thing going on where his body is not cooperating. Now, when you see this, I've learned that the fighter whose body stops cooperating on some shots is always one punch away from losing. Right? Longtime subscribers here know I think the world of Chris Eubank. I have more faith in Eubank fighting Canelo than I do at this point in Terence Crawford fighting Canelo. One, because Eubank has actually fought at 168 pounds in the past. Right? But even I recognize that something was bad in that Liam Smith fight. And understand the way your body goes. When you start getting concussions, they come more rapidly. For fans of the National Football League, think Steve Young, great quarterback, the best quarterback in the NFL over a multi-year stretch. Look at the times in which he was right toward the top, if not at the top, in quarterback rating. But he started getting concussions. Troy Aikman. Three Super Bowl rings. Very few have that. Incredibly accurate, strong-armed quarterback. Aikman started getting concussions. No matter how good a Young or an Aikman were when they were lucid, you understood the concussion risk was real. Right now, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, especially if you go by analytics and look at in-the-pocket rating, is... Tua Loa, a tongue, <laughs> Miami's quarterback, Tua, right? Tua is one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but he's high variance, right? In other words, there's some weeks where if you're in a fantasy pool and Tua is on the other side and he explodes, folks, you can have the 85 beers. You're losing that game, right? This is the guy who can put up a ridiculous stat sheet. But Tua has a concussion problem. Right? On some hits, he's out cold. Right? He stayed healthy last year, but you understand. There are going to be times when he's bothered. Now, Willie Hutchinson is younger than Buatzi. Right? Willie Hutchinson believe it or not, from this seat, might have a higher upside than Buatzi. Understand, Buatzi's coming off a great fight against Aziz. He has a lot of skills. He can lean over the pocket and still hide his upper body. Right? He's excellent with the upper body movement. He has a punch. He can hurt you. But he's not fluid like this. Right, that Richards fight. Hutchinson wins that by several rounds. That's a tough veteran opponent. Right, but you notice Hutchinson, if he gets in his comfort zone and doesn't get hit hard, can do a lot in the sport. Right, he's fearless. He's high volume. He's effortless. If you're a judge and this guy throws down his A-game, 
the other fighter is going to have to do a hell of a lot to even have a chance of winning the round. So right now, because in part of that Lenny fight, believe it or not, and because, of course, Buatzi is coming off of a great performance, right? You're getting Hutchinson at a plus 189. Folks, a plus 150 would give him a 40% chance of winning the fight. The casino is telling you he has less than a 40% chance of winning the fight. Bet a dollar to win a dollar and 89 back, plus the dollar you bet. If this fight goes the distance, Hutchinson's going to be hard to beat. Let me point out that there are a whole group of fighters in the sport where you look at them and you understand the guy looks so good. Bevo is one of them. Where the guy looks so good in terms of making you miss, uh, fast hands, framing his shots, making the uh, making the crowd know he's frustrating an opponent. Right? That if a Bevo fight goes a distance, the other fighter is going to have a hard time winning on the scorecards unless that fighter somehow has found a way to drop Bevel multiple times. You remember Tyson Fury against Wilder, the first fight, right? Tyson Fury hits the canvas twice in that fight, twice, and quite frankly should have still won on the scorecards. As it was, getting dropped twice, the second knockdown, he makes it up at the count of nine, if you believe he beats the count. Right? Just understand, that fight, Fury gets a draw. Right? You figure out the punchers, the fighters in the sport, who, if it goes the distance, you're going to have a hard time winning on the scorecards against. Folks, Willie Hutchinson's one of those guys. The bet I'm recommending here, and I know he's the underdog, and I know he's a big underdog, right? A plus 189. The bet I'm recommending here is Hutchinson, simply to win. Right? That plus 189 is something you get if Hutchinson gets a stoppage or if he wins by decision. Grab the plus 189 hedged with Buatzi by stoppage. But I need for everyone to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if Buatzi wins the fight, the favorite, you lose it all. I believe the risk is worth taking because the Hutchinson I see is feast or famine. If he's on his A game, hardly gets touched, is better coordinated than his opponent, is faster than his opponent, plays the games with distance that he plays, where he's outside, Hutchinson looks like he can jump outside on the band, uh, then when he gets inside, it's for a reason, right? A multi-punch combination, um, heavy on power shots, you know, has his uh, body tucked in such a way where it's hard to find him, if that guy shows up, Buatzi's in significant risk. I like the underdog here. I'll be the casino's Huckleberry on the plus 189. I like Hutchinson simply to win hedged with Buatzi by stoppage. Understand, the ref did Hutchinson a favor in that Lenny fight by stopping the fight. Right? That was one of those situations where you saw him and you thought to yourself, wow, this guy could be badly hurt after he got off the canvas. Right, folks? He's struggling, just like Eubank was struggling when Liam Smith hurt him. Right? You know, Eubank, if he is flying at 30,000 feet, if he's on his game, wow. His opponent's going to be in trouble. Right? But even though he's only been stopped once in his career, he's lost other fights, but he's only been stopped once in his career. You understand, particularly given age, 
that Eubank in his 30s, unlike Hutchinson here, uh, you understand that Eubank's body might rebel against him, right? With Eubank, it's even more severe because Eubank, of course, has lost eight pounds in the middle of his career to drop from 168 to 160 pounds, right? Well, here, Hutchinson, granted, you know, he's only lost once. He has only been stopped once. But the stoppage looks so bad to me in terms of how his body reacted. In other words, this wasn't the premature stoppage where you got the feeling the guy got buzzed but wasn't really dazed and confused. Right? This wasn't, um, you know, George Groves, the first fight against Carl Froch. Right? No, no, no. This is a different type of stoppage where you look at the guy and you say to yourself, he doesn't have control of his faculties. Right? If Buwazi, who can punch, lands flush on Hutchinson, and Hutchinson gets wobbly, then I think you cash on the Buwazi by stoppage prop. I don't think Hutchinson has the ability to bluff a ref when he's badly hurt, because his body rebels against him. That's how bad to me that Lenny stoppage looked. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. I like the underdog here, the plus 189, Willie Hutchinson, simply to win, hedged with the favorite, Huatsi, by stoppage. Let me hear your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.